the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the second and third chapters. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields. And as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God, where Abiathar was high priest, and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him. How to destroy him? The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A friend of mine returned from a vacation during which he and his family had traveled pretty much across the country to visit relatives. Somebody made the comment that my friend didn't appear to be very rested despite the fact that he had been gone for over two weeks. You wouldn't be too rested either, he said, if all you did was drive for two weeks. I feel like I need another vacation. And everyone had a good laugh at my friend's sense of humor. But I couldn't help but wonder how many of us spend about just about all of whatever precious free time we have just driving, just catching up on the laundry, catching up on the news, or catching up on the lives of our children or our families. By the time we return to the world of Monday, we wish it could be Friday so that maybe we could get some rest. It's a vicious cycle. Because by the time the weekend comes around again, the clothes hamper will be just as full as it was last weekend. And the news will still be waiting to be read and people will still be wondering why we haven't had enough time to spend with them. So we just drag our feet and wish the week away until it's finally Friday. We still hope each weekend will be different. And so often it's not. When we turn back the pages of time and of scripture, and read the creation story in Genesis 1, we find that the Lord God, after creating the heavens and the earth, stepping back to survey the glory of the work of creation and exclaiming, this is very good. Having said that, he took the seventh day off, resting from the work of creating. So we don't know, it's not said in scripture, but assuming that the Lord God enjoyed that day off, 
God decided that humankind should reap the benefit of time away from the burdens of work. Refreshment of both body and soul was so important to God that he called it Sabbath and blessed such time by stamping it holy. Now I looked up in the dictionary, or I looked up online, how many, uh, fo- how many phrases there are that we say holy, holy mackerel, holy Moses, holy some things we ca- I can't say from the pulpit, holy Hannah, uh, on and on, they're, they're, they're so, at least I say holy moly a lot. Uh, maybe you say holy something a lot too, but it just sometimes kind of rolls off our tongues. But do we really stop and think what it is to be holy? Um, I'm a cradle Lutheran, and I know that when I was a child and we had our combined opening Sunday school services, we sang out of an old black Sunday school hymnal, and um, there was a hymn in there, um, Take Time to Be Holy. Does anybody know that? Are there any old Methodists here? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's in 6-8. It's, it's one of those, take time to be holy. But anyway, but I was kind of, when I stopped and thought about that title, because to be holy means in scriptural sense, to be set apart. So it's kind of curious that this title of this hymn is, we should just be holy, we should just be set apart. But take time to be holy. Take time to be what you are. Set apart by God to swim in God's goodness. Take time to be set about, to enjoy being set apart by God. The Sabbath is holy. A Sabbath is holy. Rest is holy. Renewal is essential and sacred for continued alertness and good attitude. We break God's law when we deprive ourselves of such opportunities for renewal and the healing power of time off, of time set apart. The ministry of Jesus is full of examples of how Sabbath time could benefit us all. Jesus and his disciples were making their way through a grain field one day when the disciples decided to pluck some of the grain and eat it because it was the only food available to them at that moment. The ancient laws of the Old Testament were rigid concerning Sabbath observance. Food which would be eaten on that day was to have been prepared the day before. But Jesus had come to make life easier by fulfilling those old laws so that they no longer proved a burden to the people of God. So in the custody of God's protective grace, the disciples were permitted to pluck the heads of grain and eat them. The Pharisees in this encounter represent human resistance to God's grace by their unyielding determination to hold on to the letter of the law that required change. Its true meaning and holiness was buried beneath their human and legalistic interpretation of the laws of the Sabbath rest and holiness. Jesus knew that his followers were hungry and that hunger recognizes only the need for satisfaction. Regardless of the day, 
later in the synagogue in worship. Jesus knew that the man with the withered hand would not be permitted to stay there in his present state. He had already said that the Sabbath was made for humankind. Now in the presence of the Pharisees, he proved it by curing the withered hand. Knowing that this miracle that provided relief to a suffering person and other incidents like this would cost him his life. Because human nature resists grace and pardon and even healing. In spite of the rapid pace of life as we live it today, God still extends to us the invitation to seek proper rest and holy reflection. That's why Jesus and his disciples went from the grain field to synagogue, from feeding the body to feeding the spirit. Jesus created disturbance because he wanted to change things so that the people of God wouldn't be smothered by laws, but embraced by grace and renewal. Surely, given the old laws about uncleanliness, the man with the withered hand must have created disruption on his own by entering the synagogue where because of his broken state, he would be denied any participation in the worship. And instead of being hostile, the Pharisees should have rejoiced when Jesus healed the man, thus making him acceptable even to them. Jesus had come to fulfill the law by extending grace and nourishment and mercy. But in this day, as in ours, most people who cannot accept things they don't understand often reject things out of hand. So many of us don't accept pardoning grace and forgiveness and restful peace through Jesus Christ because it seems just too good and too impossible to be real. Yet there is no other name under heaven and no other way to complete renewal and healing and hope except through the one who grants us permission to eat and find healing and restoration, not only on Sabbath days, but on all days. T time away from our normal tasks is a gift from God to be cherished for its own sake, for its opportunities to rest. Take a rest. Take a Sabbath from those things that consume your mind and your spirit. It doesn't have to be on a Sunday, although we do rest in taking a holy time out of the week to worship together. But some people have to work on Sundays. Those two. Those two need to take a Sabbath time to revel in being set apart. A time to be in relationship. A time to listen to some beautiful music or enjoy God's nature, God's creation. Playing golf on Sunday is not taking a Sabbath. It's just not. It might be part of someone's stopping, breathing, knowing that 
it's okay to not be busy every minute of the day of every minute of our lives. If it was good enough for God, it should be good enough for you and me. A little story, but it has to do with taking a Sabbath. And I can say this now because I'm retired. But I remember one of my very early meetings after I was ordained. And, and um, some people probably have seen that we used to get these little red books that was a day planner. And to be sure, a pastors are busy people, just like a lot of other people are busy. But I just remember, because I still have some objectivity, a group of pastors, and we're not all like that, but I do remember this particular group who stood there in a circle holding their red books, and everybody was trying, I think, to out-busy the other person. Oh, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. And I don't, I mean, I'm sure there are other spheres in which you move where sometimes being busy as, is seen as a badge of that which gives us meaning and purpose. And there's nothing wrong with being busy. But let's not ever forget that a Sabbath was important to God. A Sabbath is important to you. Now we're here observing a Sabbath time on a Sunday, a time set apart, a holy time, a time to stop, a time to be filled with the beauty of worship. Attending church with family and friends can help instill a certain holiness to a time of rest and renewal. Hearing how God in Jesus Christ reaches out in loving compassion to feed our souls and bodies with his presence and relieve our bruises, both physical and mental, with his touch, will both bless and enrich us. May we all seek such Sabbath time in our lives and find our bodies and souls restored in the balm of that love that Jesus has for us all. Amen.